I grew up in an orphan home from the time I was seven till I was 17. And when I was 17, they asked me to leave the orphan home and to find things to do to occupy my time, I joined a gym, weightlifting gyms. And that was my initiation into weightlifting when I was 17. And Frank uh, won the 1948 Olympic Games in weightlifting in the middleweight uh, division. And uh, he is our oldest uh, living uh, Olympic champion in weightlifting, uh, well into his 90s, still working out. I can tell by putting my arm around him here, there's plenty of muscle on this guy still. And uh, really a, a lifelong dedication to, uh, to the Iron Games. So let me turn it over to him. I hear all these names coming up and it brings back memories to me because I won my first championship in 1942, so you know how far back I go. I was born in 22, so I guess I'm a little older than most of the people here. I was very fortunate in uh, meeting all the people from the York Gang in the early years, and uh, in fact, Bob Hoffman paid my way to the Junior Nationals in Bristol, Connecticut in 1942, and Turpak was my coach. So. Here was the guy that I looked up to, and I was out to beat him, and he was coaching me. Uh, Stanko made my first weightlifting belt when I first went to York. I got out of the service in 45, and I went to, I called Bob, and uh, Bob said, what are you doing? I said, nothing. He said, well, come on, you're a member of the team. So within a week after I got out of the service, I was in York. People from all over the world used to come up on Saturdays and watch us lift. We used to train Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and Saturday was our every day. I don't know if you recall the name Gord Venables, but he used to uh, draw and write for Strength and Health. He was a great weightlifter that uh, came from Canada originally, and he was a squat snatcher and he was very good at it. And uh, one time, we were all going on a trip, and uh, I don't know if it was Turpak or Hoffman that was driving and we were all in the back. And the officer stopped us for speeding and the officer said, Bye, gentlemen, you've been driving 75. And Venables yelled out, No, officer, he was doing 85. <laughs> One day Grimmick came up to me and he said, Frank, he said, measure my arm. I said, why? He said, I just want to see what it is. He hadn't even worked out. He was still cold. I measured his arm, it was 18 inches. When we were training for the uh, 48 Olympics, Grimmick said, I think I'm gonna lift too. And he hadn't done any lifting for many years. And he did 245 snatch, just, just cold. That's how strong he was. The thrill of being a weightlifter, we did it because we loved it, not because of any other reason at all. It was just something we just wanted to do. And it was just marvelous. So I had 19 years of uh, competition, so I, thought, I figured that was long term. I've met so many wonderful people, traveled all over the world. Uh, if I hadn't been into weightlifting in the sport, I wouldn't have been able to do any of that. So it's been a wonderful way of life for me. It's one of the things that I think is so uh, interesting about this organization, the things by bringing people together, uh, the chance events that occur, and uh, how important they can be. We, we had a situation where we announced the presence of Frank Spellman, 1948 Olympic driver, who is over 90 years of age. And when I announced that, I was walking among the uh, folks in the audience, and one of them grabbed me, uh, Pete Moroses, who's been with our organization for many years, been the host of the dinners. And he said, did you say Frank Spellman was here? I said, yeah, he's here. He's right over there on the, on the side. He said, do you know that I used to train with Frank over 60 years ago in York, Pennsylvania? And we were great friends, and, and, and we did many things together. And he says, I, I can't believe that he's here, and I, I hope he remembers me. Back in the middle of the 40s, we trained together. And then in 48, he went on to be one of 11 Americans who have won a gold medal in weightlifting. We were, we were good friends, but then, you know, life goes on, people separate, and uh, this is the first of these.
I've seen him or we've seen each other. So I said, well, let me bring you over there and, and uh, let me introduce you to him again and, and let's see what he says. So I walk over to Frank. Frank is sitting there at his dinner. I interrupt him for a second and I said, Frank, there's a fellow here who said he used to train with you in York. And his name is Pete Moroz. And before he even got to uh, Moroz, uh, his eyes opened up and he said, Pete Moroz, he's here. I looked at him, he looked at me, we didn't recognize each other. <laughs> he jumped out of his chair, and there you had two men, late in his 80s and early 90s, hugging each other, not having seen each other in over 60 years. Anyway, it was, it was great to see him. And it was such a magic moment, it was so wonderful to see them in contact with each other. They didn't spend the next half hour going over what had happened in their lives. And in the absence of this event, these guys have never seen each other in the rest of their lives. So it's, it was such a pleasure for me, it made my day to see this happen.